All right. In this module, we're going to talk about uh, ways that we can normalize mechanical property data so that it's uh, more applicable from location to location of testing. And so that leads us to stress and strain. So in the previous example where I showed you the gummy tensile test results, it was in load uh, extension. But as I showed you, if we increase the sample size or change the sample size, that affects the force or load that it takes uh, as well as the extension. And so we need to be able to normalize um, that force. And the way we normalize force or F is to turn it into stress. And so stress is the force acting on a specific cross-sectional area A. So if we have a, a block of material, so this could be the gummy uh, reduced section, we apply a force, and so the arrows out uh, indicate that it's tension, um, and then there's a cross-sectional area here. So we're going to use a naught or zero for the area in blue, and then the force is F, and that's uh, acting on the uh, uh, perpendicular or normal to the area. Uh, this also works for compression. So compression would basically be the forces in the opposite direction uh, towards uh, the, uh, the area, not away from it. And so this is how we get stress. So this is specifically engineering stress uh, given the term sig uh, sigma. So we have sigma equals the force divided by the cross-sectional area. And we use, the reason, if you're wondering why the not or zero is here, is because this is what we term the original cross-sectional area. Because as we, uh, as we stress this material, as it moves, the area will change. And so we define engineering stress by using the original cross-sectional area. So if we look at the units on this, uh, force has units of newtons, and area has would have units of meters squared. And so that is the unit of pascals, or PA. And oftentimes when we're dealing with real materials, we're dealing with kilopascal, megapascal, gigapascal. So we're dealing with large amounts of pascals. So all of this, all this stress definition, uh, engineering stress will work for tensile or compressive forces perpendicular to the area. We can also um, talk about stress in the context of shear and torsion uh, states. So in this way, again, we have a, a block of material with a cross-sectional area. And in this case, we apply a shear stress. So the force is acting to the right on the top and to the left on the bottom. And so we basically, uh, that's uh, kind of shearing the, the material uh, from upper and lower faces. And so in this case, the force is uh, coplanar with the area as opposed to perpendicular when we're dealing with compressive tensile. Uh, and we also have torsional, where we can think of a, a rod a shape, uh, and we have a cross-sectional area of that, and it gets, um, there's a, a torsional force uh, acting to twist or rotate uh, the rod. And so this is uh, the cross-sectional area up here. So let's talk a little bit more about different types of stress states. So different, you know, tension that we talked about, compression, uh, shear, and so forth. So let's look at some examples of that. And let's start with tension, because that's what we started with with the uh, gummy example. And so this is known as simple tension. So again, we have a rod shape with a cross-sectional area perpendicular to the force, and the force is moving away from the cross-sectional area. And so we define it, the stress as we did before. And this is a classic example um, of a cable. So if you see a cable on a uh, bridge, or in this case, a ski lift, um, the cable is under tension, right? Because if it's not under tension, it would be slack, right? So anything you see uh, uh, like that is going to be tension. Also on the ski lift, there's a rotating shaft, uh, the drive shaft, that causes the, the, uh, the ski lift to move up or down. And so that rotation of this shaft 
is an example of torsion. And again, um, the the kind of moment is moving and causing it to rotate uh, top and bottom. And there's an area here. And so we kind of find the um, torsional stress uh, tau as the force F uh, S here, uh, again, divided by the area. So it's always force over area, uh, but the definition of those, uh, the, the direction and uh, vector of those forces is what matters. Um, also, we can look at compressive. So simple compression, um, if we look at this kind of rock structure here and you look at uh, uh, material here in the middle, uh, this section of rock is uh, has a huge force uh, from this uh, big boulder, but also below it, because it's not moving, there has to be an equal force um, below it. And so that's a classic example of compression. And so again, force over area. In this case, the, the directionality would just be different. You can see here, uh, it's moving towards it. And also a uh, column of this uh, bridge as well, this structural member um, is under compressive force as well. Um, so there's lots of other different stress states that exist. Um, if you think about a pressurized tank, this is not one of those simple cases we've talked about. This is actually uh, known as biaxial tension, uh, because if you think of a segment of the uh, wall of this tank, uh, its uh, force uh, is basically from all directions in that plane. So basically um, tension from all of these uh, axes of the sheet metal that forms the tank. Um, and then also there is a more complicated compression. Instead of simple, what we call uniaxial, one direction, uh, we can have hydrostatic compression, where instead of one direction, you have compression from all directions. And that's an example of anything um, under fluid. So it's something in water, right? You talk If you think about diving, there's more and more pressure on you as you go further and further down. And that pressure is exerted all around you uh, from... Uh, from that fluid. So that's an example of hydrostatic pressure. All right, so those are different stress states, and that's how we normalize the force in the force extension data. Let's talk about how we, uh, we normalize the extension data now. So again, in a test, there's going to be elongation during a tensile test, uh, and if we think about compression, there's going to be contraction. And, but it will depend on the sample geometry, right? So the bigger this uh, test sample is, the more it will extend, the smaller, the less. And so we need to normalize that. And we normalize that by talking about strain. So strain is defined as the change in length, so elongation, over a length of material. So we basically normalize the change in length or elongation by the, the length of material. And so for engineering strain, epsilon, we define this as the instantaneous length, Li, minus the original or initial length, L0, over the original or instantaneous, or sorry, the original or uh, initial length here, L0 again. So the, uh, this top part of the expression is also the same as delta L, so change in L, and that's known as elongation or contraction, depending on whether it's tensile or compressive. So if we look at the units, uh, the top length is millimeters or any other length unit, and the bottom is also the same length, millimeter length or meter. And so this is uh, unitless, um, although I will mention that if you look at these uh, stress strain uh, plots, you will sometimes see units uh, and they'll just put millimeter over millimeter or maybe inch over inch. Um, and that's just, um, it's, it is unitless, but some people like to specify the millimeter or the inch that was used in those calculations. So you, that's not uncommon to, uh, to see. And just like before, um, the, uh, uh, there can also be strain um, in other stress states like we saw, uh, but we're gonna fo focus on tension and compression. So one thing that we wanna mention with uh, this is that when we have elongation uh, under tension, um, to preserve volume, that means that it also be has to contract in this lateral direction, right? So if 
if a material becomes longer, if we don't make volume, we have to cause contraction in the lateral direction. Same thing in, in contraction with a compression, uh, compression test, it will get uh, shorter, it will contract, but it will also get wider because we can't just uh, remove volume. So elongation uh, parallel to the tensile axis, so this axis, and then contraction perpendicular to the tensile axis, and then contraction um, parallel, and then expansion perpendicular. So that's something we have to consider um, in one of the next modules.